Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I want to show you a data pack that I created. This is a 3D wireframe renderer built in Minecraft. Uh, so here we've got a cube and it's sort of spinning around randomly. Uh, this may look 3D. In fact, your brain will do a pretty good job of convincing you that it's 3D. But if we look around, you'll notice this is not actually 3D. We can come up against this wall here and you can see it's composed of 2D lines. So all these 2D lines, when you look at it from straight on, end up creating the image of a 3D object. So this is called a projection from 3D down to 2D. So this wireframe renderer is built, of course, on armor stands. So these ones over here are not really being used. They're kind of left behind from previously being used for rendering. But the ones up here holding blaze rods are part of the wireframe render. And so each armor stand is holding the blaze rod at a different angle. And if you look at the arms of the armor stands, you can see that the arms are rotating in order to get the blaze rod to be oriented correctly. And it was very difficult <laughs> to program this to get the armor stands to hold the blaze rod at the correct angle and align everything just right. Uh, so that's what it's based on. It's, it's armor stands holding blaze rods, but there's a lot of math involved to get the armor stands to hold the blaze rods in the correct way. So let me show you some of the capabilities of the data pack. So let's call function wireframe colon spawn TIE fighter. <laughs> and here is uh, Darth Vader's TIE fighter. Um, we can turn off the animation. So scoreboard players set global animation zero. And we just have a front on view of this TIE fighter. Again, it's just it's, your brain convinces you it's 3D, but it's actually 2D. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. Um, now we have these controls over here. We can; These are basically the same controls you have in the WASTA form uh, in Minecraft. So we can go left, we can go right. Uh, we can you know, basically turn those on and off. Up, uh, we can go backwards. Uh, we can look. So if I go up and then look down and move forwards, we can look at it from above. Um, uh, let's see what else is there. So let's let's spawn that cube again. So function wireframe colon spawn cube. Whoops, uh, wireframe. <laughs> there we go. And uh, let's see. So we're still looking at it from the same same angle that we were looking at the Tie Fighter. Uh, we can. Oh, there's another uh, animation. Scoreboard player set global animation two. <laughs> okay, so this is. I need to actually let's look up a little bit. Uh, I need to back up, go up a bit. Um, anyway, so it's a bouncing animation, and we can look around to get get a good view of that. Um, now you'll notice that when the um, the cube bounces on the bottom, some of the the uh, the the lines, the lines sort of like on the sides pointing up, sort of seem to go past the end of the cube. Um, let's let's spawn that Tie Fighter again. And it can also bounce. And it's especially pronounced here. You can see that some of those lines are going past the end of the, uh, past, basically past the back of the TIE Fighter. I don't remember this far away. And so the reason that's happening is because uh, a blaze rod is one meter long. You know, when it's being held by an armor stand, at, you know, in, yeah, when it's being held by an armor stand, it's one meter long. And so there's sort of like a minimum length that each line segment can be. And, uh, let's let's spawn the cube again, um, and let's turn off the animation. So so as we um, get farther away, uh, the, you know we're gonna hit the minimum length, the basically one meter minimum length, and it's gonna. I mean, it just has to render basically past the end of the uh, past the end of the cube. Now as we get really close, let's let's get really close. If you get too close, the part of the line will be off screen and it just won't render it. But um, let's get really close. And we'll start to see like this line segment, even though it's totally on screen, it's not reaching quite to the end. So basically there's a certain number of armor stands that are spawned uh, for the purpose of drawing each line segment. And so this line segment has one, two, three, four, I don't know, it's something like 15 arm, uh, armor stands. And so there just aren't enough armor stands to render the rest of the line segment. And so basically what we get is there's like a certain optimal viewing distance at which um, you can see the uh, the objects that get rendered by this. Um, if you get too close, then it can't render the entire line. There aren't enough armor stands. If you get too far away, then uh, the armor stand that were the blaze rod gets too long. Uh, let's see what else is there. There's materials. So scoreboard players set 
global material um, one. And so let's also set the animation back to one. And so if I reload, we'll see uh, now the material is diamond swords. So diamond swords have the same basic like length and pose and everything as blaze rods. Um, and so they also work. Obviously, they don't look quite the same because they have these cross guards and different colors for the different parts of the sword. Oh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to change the material. So there's there's several materials I have hard coded in. There's there's diamond swords. Um, sticks look okay. They don't have as good of uh, contrast as blaze rods with the black background, but at least they don't. Have, they have kind of a consistent texture and and everything. So. Um, there's a few other materials. Let's see, what else can we do? Um, oh yeah, I have, uh, so if we use function, wireframe, colon, so spawn cube was how we spawned the cube, but we can also add things to that. So let's, uh, let's do create creeper face <laughs> and we can create the creeper face. And so <laughs> we, we, creeper face has that problem a lot where the line segments need to or basically shorter than one meter, but they hit that minimum distance. And so you see that a lot where they sort of extend beyond where they should extend. And it looks pretty bad. <laughs> you can see right there, it looked pretty bad. Uh, so yeah, the creeper face has that problem. Let's spawn the cube again, so that'll delete the creeper face. Um, there's also, uh, I made uh, die faces. And I thought this would look good, but it turns out it doesn't because you can see through everything. So. Um, but you can you can sort of see like there's two golden swords on one side. There's three stones or those are iron swords. There's six sticks on this side, uh, four wooden swords on the on the far face, currently. So you can sort of tell what's going on if you look at it long enough. But uh, there's just a lot of noise, and the fact that you can see the back faces and the front faces makes it really hard to tell. Yeah, so the wireframe has no culling. Culling is a word for getting rid of things that are you shouldn't be able to see because they're obstructed by other parts of the object. And so, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look great with the die faces. Also, because they're not, like, they're lines instead of dots, but I don't think that's the real reason. I think it's just there's too much noise um, from being able to see through it. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty much my wireframe renderer. It's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's not, uh, it has... I'm basically maxing out the performance with the uh, TIE Fighter. Spawn TIE Fighter. Um, this thing, like if we press F3, yeah, it's 100 millisecond ticks. So the server is already going at half speed when the TIE Fighter is spawned because there's just so many armor stands. Um, and it's just it's slow to render all the armor stands. It's slow to move all the armor stands into place and calculate where they need to be and everything. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess that's what happens when you build a render inside a rendered game <laughs> inside of a scripting engine that's not meant for performance exactly. But uh, yeah, I really, I really love watching the the Tie Fighter bounce up and down. Though, <laughs> yeah, just kind of funny to see. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, Sometimes you can see like, yeah, the, 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 the interpolation of the armor stand. So they they get teleported around and they also get posed, right? So teleporting moves their location and posing moves what, what their angle is that they're holding the armor stands in with their arms. You can see a bunch of these armor stands with different poses for their arms here. These are leftover armor stands that are not currently being used for rendering because there aren't enough line segments or the line segments aren't long enough. Um, so, so there's a mismatch between the teleporting the armor stands around and the posing of their the angular posing of their arms, uh, because the angular posing of their arms happens instantly, but teleporting them around does not get rendered instantly. There's like an animation, so um, so that causes like angle mismatches and it makes it look not great, especially when you're like rotating things around or moving them quickly. <laughs> so it looks it looks a little derpy. Nothing about this isn't derpy, but it's still really cool. If you want to download it and try it for yourself, uh, there's a link in the description to the data pack. Just make sure it's kind of hard-coded coordinates, so minus 106, 78, and about 100. So if you make, they make a super flat world, um, the default super flat world with a, the floor at y equals 56, 
to be able to see it. You'll need to build your own screen for it, the background. This is just normal like concrete blocks, but uh, you can try it out for yourself. That's about it. Thanks for watching.